the book of Judges, chapter number 16. We're going to look at something in the life of Samson tonight. A little background on Samson. Uh, we all know that one of the beauties of Christmas is the miraculous birth that Jesus was born of a virgin. Samson, too, had a miraculous birth. His mother, the wife of Manoah, uh, she was barren. She couldn't have children. Just like John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, couldn't have children. And you can study it throughout the scriptures of women that couldn't have children, like Hannah. But God touched the womb. And the angel of the Lord spoke to Manoah and his wife and told him she was going to bear a son and that no razor should come upon his head, that he would be a Nazarite indeed. He had a Nazarite vow. And you and I both know that uh, the secret of his strength was not that he had long hair, but that he had a vow before God. And as long as he kept that vow, God gave him strength that no man that I've ever read after has ever had. Uh, Samson was the judge of Israel. Samson done tremendous things through his strength. He took the gates of the city of Philistines and carried them and threw them away. He, he took a jawbone of an ass and threw, slew a thousand men. And he did tremendous things because of his strength. He ripped a lion in half because of his strength. Uh, but Samson had some problems. I shudder to think what Samson could have been had he lived up to the song that Miss Crystal sang, where he gave the Lord his whole heart. Samson had a problem, and his big problem was he had a problem with the ladies. Uh, he wouldn't listen to the counsel of his parents and take him a wife from Israel. Uh, he had a problem with looking for a wife from a, another nation. and He had all kinds of problems with ladies. And the biggest problem he had with a lady is what we're going to read about. In Judges chapter number 16, we'll begin reading verse 16. The Bible says, And it came to pass when she, speaking of Delilah, pressed him daily with her words and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came unto her and brought money in their hand, and she made him sleep upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head, and she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep, and said, I will go out as at other times before, and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him, and put out his eyes, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies. We thank you for watching out for that young lady on the highways, even though she had an accident. We can replace vehicles. The Lord, lives can't be replaced. And so, Father, thank you for watching out for her. Lord, we do thank you. Lord, that we can be in the house of God tonight. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us. And, God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, you know your people. You know what they have faced this day and the days leading up to today. You know what uh, 
uh, uh, obstacles that have been put in their lives, what storms have been put in their lives, and Lord, even what they're going through right now. And so, Father, I pray that you'd encourage them, you'd edify them. I pray that we'd all learn to yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God and to the Word of God, that we might be the servants that you'd have us to be. Now, Father, I pray that you would uh, certainly have your way in our midst, and God, I pray revival would break out in our church. I pray we'd see a harvest of souls saved, uh, and I pray that folks would be as serious about the things of God as you are, and God, may we see you do great things in our day. Now, Lord, I pray you'd be with Brother Greg tomorrow. You know what he's facing. Be with those that are sick, Miss uh, 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 Renee and Brother James and others that are sick and couldn't be here tonight. Be with them. Now, Father, uh, meet with us. Have your will and way amongst us. Use this unworthy vessel. And, Father, we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple of things. I want you to notice the pressing of the enemy. Look in verse number 16, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Can I say we do have an enemy? The Bible says, uh, 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 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And there's times when uh, 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 we know he's around, and then there's times when we really know he's around. Uh, there's times when he presses us and fixes us, uh, and it seems like no uh, 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 relief is in sight. But I remind you, the Bible says, Draw nigh to God, uh, he'll draw nigh unto thee. Uh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, and can I say that uh, uh, if Samson would have got up uh, and left that situation, went back home where he should have been all along, uh, uh, he would have not had to deal with this woman anymore. Uh, but he stayed there, and she pressed him and vexed him daily. And can I say, you listen to the devil long enough, you'll get vexed too. Uh, so we see the pressing of the enemy. Now, can I say what really troubled him is he thought that she loved him. Let me just help you with something. The devil's got a lot of folks out there that are going to buddy up to you. They're going to tell you all kinds of things. They're going to whisper sweet nothings in your ears. Uh, let me talk to these boys on the front row. Uh, don't run after the first girl that shows you any attention. There's a whole lot of fishes in the sea, but there's only one that God's made for you. You wait for that one. Okay? Uh because you're all handsome dudes, huh? I mean, who wouldn't want to be your girlfriend, huh? And so when they come up, I know you have a trouble at school because you only got one girl at school, and, you know, you're not allowed to date your sister, all right? But there's coming a day. You're going to find this little sweet thing, and she's going to tell you how handsome you are and how manly you are and how good you are shooting them Nerf guns and all that stuff you do. You don't pay attention to somebody whispering sweet nothing. You know one you pay attention to? One that'll sit in a church pew with you. One that reads their Bible. One that prays. One that loves Jesus. That's the one you need to be interested in. You listening? Huh? You listening? Huh? All right. Just trying to help you, boys. What are you all looking at? I know where you're sitting, too, huh? Especially you, Mr. Tar Heel. You're a little bit older than them, huh? Don't make me come over and sit in your lap. Uh, he thought she loved him. Mm, better be careful. Mm, been many a fellow's been hoodwinked by a woman, and there's been many a gal's that's been hoodwinked by a man. Mm, uh, listen, someone showing you attention does not constitute love. And if they're pulling you away from the will of God, they definitely don't love you. We see the pressing of the enemy. Notice the pivot from stability. Look at verse 17. <clears throat> when it goes on to say that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite uh, unto God from my mother's womb, and if I uh, be shaven, then my strength will 
go from me and I shall be, become weak and be like any other man. See, he pivots from everything that's been stable in his life. The only thing that's been worth anything in Samson's life, go back and read three chapters of his life. The only stability he's had is what God did for him. God's the one that allowed him to be born. God's the one that separated him from his mother's womb. God's the one that gave the command not to shave his head. He didn't share that with anybody else. But when he pivoted from the stability of his life, he got in trouble. Hmm? Can I say, when the prodigal was at the father's house, everything was good. But when he pivoted and left the stability, that's when he got in trouble. Huh? Adam and Eve, when they followed the command of God, they were good. But when uh, 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 Eve quit listening to God and started listening to the serpent, got into trouble. Uh, listen, I preached a message years and years ago. They got what they wanted, but they lost what they had. When you leave the stability that God's placed, when you walk away from the Bible, you're going to get in trouble. When you walk away from church, you're going to get in trouble. And by the way, there's been a, many of them say, well, I'll get that one to come to church with me, only end up brokenhearted and out of the will of God. Hmm? I don't know why I'm on all that tonight, but I am. Hmm? Can I say this? Notice, if you will, the price on his head. Look at verse 18. In the end of that verse it says, Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought her money in, in their hand. Look at verse number 5. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, uh, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him, uh, and we will give thee every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. Now I don't know how many lords there were, but every one of them, Brother Phil, gave her 1,100 pieces of silver. Now, I don't know how much 1,100 pieces of silver was in that day. I know it's pretty good money in this day, and it was a whole lot more money than it was that day. Uh, she didn't love him. She loved silver. Are you listening? Uh, 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 and she uh, uh, acts absolutely became uh, uh, the rudeness and worthless uh, uh, in this world and sold herself for that money. Uh, but it was a price on his head. I don't know if you know this or not. There's a price on your head. The devil's got a bullseye on every one of us. He wants to knock us out of the way called faith. Because every day you live for Jesus, you make an impact in somebody's life, whether or not you realize or not. Brother Phil, if you blew your testimony last Saturday, you wouldn't have been able to witness that guy today on the job. Hmm? The devil's got a price on your head, friend. And then notice, if you will, uh, the progeny or the consequence of sin. Verse number 20. We find that he woke from his sleep, said he was going to go out as he did other times before, but look at verse 21. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Can I say the devil will find you? He'll wine and dine you. Then he'll blind you, then he'll bind you, and then he'll grind you down to powder. You know, a lot of people used to be giants in the faith, and today they're not even in the house of God because the devil got his clutches in them. Hmm. Can you imagine the great champion of Israel is being led by children and made sport of being ground like an animal in the prison house of the Philistines? My dear friends, you better be quick not to judge people. You might end up in a whole lot worse shape than them. You say, well, I'll never do that. You don't know what you'll end up doing. Best thing you can do is hang close to Jesus. I'm interested in verse number 20. The Bible says, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And here's what I'm interested. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. I'm interested in those two words, wist not. I want to preach with God's help this evening on this thought. Spiritual unawareness. He thought he'd just show up and do what he did every time before. 
he wished not that the Lord had departed from him. It amazes me how many people will open the Bible and read uh, the Bible and expect to get something like any other time, but they wish not that the Lord had departed from them. People get in to pray and wish not because of their life and where they are that God don't hear their, their prayers. Do you realize if you regard iniquity in your heart, God don't hear what you have to pray about? There are folks who are spiritually unaware of some things in this day and age. Can I say there are a lot of folks out there tonight because they know the uh, uh, the words, the old Tannenbaum, old Tannenbaum, and they put up a Christmas tree in their house. They claim to be Christian, and they believe they're going to heaven. Have no idea, spiritually unaware, that uh, uh, believing uh, 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 that Jesus was born of a virgin won't take you to heaven, friends. Uh, you've got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You need to be born again by the Spirit of God uh, or you're not going to heaven. Uh, 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 you can pray, read your Bible, and go to church and die and go to hell, my dear friends. Uh, there are a lot of people who are spiritually unaware uh, there are a lot of folks that come to church because uh, 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 they've been saved and because they pay, put a tithe in the plate. Uh, they think uh, everything's all right. But my dear friends, there's a whole lot more to being saved than putting your money in the offering plate. A whole lot more to being saved than coming to church. Uh, there are a lot of folks spiritually unaware. Now, let me just uh, throw this out. Gam, write this down. I'm going to make people mad right here, okay? Number one, you're, ne you're never as spiritual as you think you are. Yeah. Let me go ahead and say that again because only three of you agreed with me. You're never as spiritual as you think you are. Huh? Matter of fact, about the time you think you are spiritual, you're no longer humble and you're not spiritual at all. You're full of pride. Hmm? Uh, the closest you'll ever be to God is when you realize you're a zero with the hole knocked out of it. Hmm? You're never as spiritual as you think you are. Secondly, let me say this. You cannot be spiritual ignoring God's commands. You can't be spiritual doing contrary to what God said. Hmm? I've heard people say, well, I'm all right with God, and they're, they're living like the devil. No, you aren't right with God. Huh? And let me say this thirdly, you're never spiritual when dabbling in sin. Mm -mm. You're not spiritual when you're dabbling in sin. God called us out to be a holy priesthood. He said, be ye holy for I'm holy. Mm, we're only spiritual when we start emulating the Lord. Now, let me give you some things that people are spiritually unaware of. And I say today that many today, and I'm talking about many that are out of church and many that are in church, many today are spiritually unaware of the signs of the times. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, I would think, to look around and see this whole world's messed up. I mean, when you got men don't know if they're a man or not, and dressing like women, and when you got people don't know what bathroom to go into, and when you got people uh, identifying as a dog or a cat uh, or uh, something else, and uh, uh, saying there's more genders than two, uh, uh, when you got people uh, 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 that don't know which way is up and which way is down, I mean, we're in a mess in this day and age. Uh, but can I say it didn't catch God by surprise? And it shouldn't catch God's people by surprise. You know what the Bible says about the signs of the times? Matthew 24 says, uh, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Uh, for nation shall rise against nation, uh, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, Friend, you can look at uh, 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 all the wars. I've been told that on any given day, there's some 130 wars going on in this world. Hmm? Now, most of them you never hear about. You never hear about all those ones in the, in the Middle East when the, uh, the Shiites are bat battling the Hittites and all that. You don't hear about it all because it's not newsworthy, because uh, 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 it's not over oil or it's not over something that impact impacts us. Uh, but there's wars going on and rumors of wars. I believe that whole Ukraine thing was more of a rumor of a war than a war. Mm -hmm. and by the way, 
I just heard this week that they audited the Pentagon and somehow we've lost $2 trillion and they can't account for it. Now, I don't know about when you balance your checkbook, but if you got $2 trillion missing, you'd think somewhere along the line you'd think, ah, there's something missing here. Uh, i tell you where it went. It went to Ukraine and it got funneled back to a lot of these politicians, including McConnell from Kentucky. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. Hmm? Uh, but I'm just telling you, people are spiritually unaware of the signs of the times. Have you ever noticed the uptake on all the terrible storms, all the terrible uh, uh, earthquakes, all the terrible volcano eruptions, uh, 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 the folks that are dying of famine and pestilence and all kinds of things. Uh, by the way, diseases are pestilences as well. Uh, uh, have you ever heard, uh, I heard this uh, uh, last week, uh, uh, that 90% of all the diseases in this world were not here a hundred years ago. You say, what's going on, preacher? We're coming down the end of the times. This world, uh, Romans tells us, this world is groaning for the Lord to come back. Uh, hey, uh, every time there's a volcanic eruption, it's this world belching, uh, uh, looking for the Prince of Peace to come and restore uh, 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 order to this world. Uh, hey, the earth is quaking under the pressure of sin. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 before sin came, there wasn't thorns on roses. Uh, there wasn't venom. Uh, there wasn't mosquitoes that would bite you. There wasn't anything that would hurt or harm. Uh, but when sin came, uh, it not only brought sin upon the uh, mankind, but it brought a curse on this world. Uh, and this world's about ready to come apart because one of these days it's going to melt with a fervent heat. Matthew 24 also tells us in verse 11, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Lord, have mercy in America right now. Over 300 different religions and denominations. Over 50 different versions of the Bible. All kinds of winds of doctrine taking people's faith away from Jesus Christ. We was watching some game show last night, and uh, 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 they had four chicks on there talking about the crystals and all. I told Net, I said they're a bunch of witches, uh, and they're being glorified uh, 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 right on the TV set. Mm. Who would have ever dreamed in America that you could be go to a fairground and and, and buy into uh, uh, all this witchcraft and everything, and and be okay? How many false preachers have to be on TV? Uh, have you seen these jokers? You send them an offering. They'll send you a bottle of water. They come out of the Sea of Galilee. And it's got great healing. You know where they got it? They got it out of the tap in the bathroom. That's where they got it. But people are stupid enough to buy into anything. P.T. Barnum says there's a su sucker born every minute. Uh, and there is. And they know how to get your money. Oh, uh, I'll send you a prayer cloth, which I've labored over and prayed. No, some little Vietnamese child uh, uh, made that in a sweatshop somewhere. Uh, that fella's never even seen it, let alone prayed over it. But he wants your money. Mm. They are, they're ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of truth. People will buy in anything but what Jesus said. Mm. Uh, the Bible goes on and says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Used to, people were neighborly. Used to, people would help somebody out when there was trouble in their life. Nowadays, we run at light speed and don't have time for anything. We don't have compassion over anything. You know, people have more compassion over a dog dying than they do over a child being aborted. Mm. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, verse number 1, This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, uh, traitors, heady, high-minders, uh, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, uh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's where we are. 
every politician when they run for office talks about God and how much they love the Lord. As soon as they get elected, they're some of the most wicked, vile people you've ever seen. Hmm? How in the world can somebody stand up and even say they're Catholic and promote abortion? You know what that is? That's called wickedness. They're playing, playing on people's sympathy. All these things came to it's coming to pass. They've been coming to pass. But there are people who are spiritually unaware of the signs of the time. Now, let me give you a little hint. And it don't matter if Trump or whoever gets in office, DeSantis or whoever gets in office next time, it don't matter if even Master Potato's brains Biden resigns today. It's not getting any better. It's only going to get worse and worse and worse till Jesus comes. See, the devil knows his time short, and he's pulling out all the stops. But what gets me is people are not plugged in. If we really knew, Brother Ray, how close we were to the Lord coming back, oh, we'd had a different kind of church service tonight. Yeah. Place would be packed out. I went and got some of the little petty uh, text messages today of why people couldn't come to church. Mm. We'd be in these altars begging God to save our loved ones. People are spiritually unaware of the signs of the times. But not only that, people are spiritually unaware of the Scriptures. Hmm. Can I help you with something? Man didn't write the Bible. The Holy Ghost wrote the Bible. Now, he used men to write and pen it down just like when you use an ink pen. Uh, the ink pen has no, no congruent thought of itself. You use the ink pen to write down your thoughts. Well, God used men to write down his thoughts. Men were just the instrument in his hand. I could take you and show you where God moved on holy men of old to pen down the holy, holy scriptures. But listen, just because somebody says they're carrying a Bible don't mean they have the scriptures. Man didn't write the Bible. The real one. Can I help you something? When they tell you that their Bible contains the Word of God, run from that joker. This doesn't contain the Word or words of God. This is the Word of God. Can I say when people tell you that uh, uh, the King James Bible has 30,000 errors, run from that joker. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, uh, when they tell you that the original Greek says this, uh, run from that joker. Nobody, nobody has ever seen the originals. They were written on sheepskin that since has dried and cracked. And say, what about the Dead Sea Scrolls? Well, what about uh, 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 Nana Nana Boo Boo? I don't care about Dead Sea Scrolls. That's not the Scriptures. Talk about the scriptures. It's been a while since I did this. Let me do this. Let's just turn over here. Turn over to Psalms chapter 12. Let me just show you something. I'm going to try and help some of you tonight. Brother Phil, write this down. You might need this. You don't believe this, so you better write this down. I want you to see this. No one ever refutes the Hebrew. It's always the Greek. You have to understand, your King James Bible came from the Greek text called the Texas Receptus. That means the received text, exactly, Christian. That's the one that the apostles pinned down. It was the southern Greek. You know God's in the south, huh? Southern Greek. It was the common man's language. God didn't pin it down in the noble language. He did it in the common man's language. Uh, can I say that every false Bible, every other version other than your King James Bible, uh, came from the Vaticanus text, which came out of the Vatican, which came from the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, it was a corrupt text. Uh, there are whole verses uh, and half a chapter and Mark missing out of that text. Uh, uh, can I say in the Vaticanus text, uh, 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 some 170 times they take away the blood of Jesus Christ, the deity of the Lord Jesus. Uh, if he was not all God and all man, there's no hope for you and I. Uh, he is the Son of God. 
God. They took out things they didn't like. But hey, you know why I know God wrote this Bible? It tells me exactly what I was, a sinner lost on my way to hell. It told me the only means for salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ, His Son, who shed His blood to be our propitiation. But look in Psalms chapter 12. I want to show you this. Look at verse number 6. There are people spiritually unaware. There are people using a wrong Bible written by a man that will not give you any spiritual insight, will not help you. Listen, the Holy Ghost only uses the Bible he wrote. Psalms chapter 12, look at verse 6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Now this is dealing with a common thing in that day. A silversmith would have a big cauldron, and he would heat it up, and he'd put that silver in there, melt that silver. And as silver begins to get heated up and melt... Uh, the impurities come to the top. It's called dross. Uh, and the silversmith takes a ladle and he scoops off the dross uh, and he throws it off to the side. Uh, and he knows, uh, uh, Aiden, that the, uh, the silver is at its most perfect state uh, when he's got all the dross off of it uh, and he looks down and he can see his own reflection. Uh, now look with that in mind. Look again in this verse. Uh, the words of the Lord are pure words. Uh, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, uh, purified seven times. Uh, that means that the Word of God came through seven uh, major language translations uh, in order for it to be purified. Uh, and the Lord looked at it in that seventh time, uh, and He said, that's when it's pure. Uh, now listen, uh, uh, the Bible's come through seven major language translations. Uh, the first, obviously, was Hebrew. Uh, the second was Aramaic. Uh, the third was Greek. Uh, the fourth was Old Syriac. Uh, the fifth was was old Latin, uh, the sixth was German, uh, and the seventh time when the Lord said it was pure uh, was your 1611 King James Bible English. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, it's purified. Uh, in the first verse you find God. Uh, in the last verse you find God. Uh, in Psalms 118 verse number 5, the very middle of that verse uh, is the middle of the Bible. And it says right in the middle of the Bible, the Lord, uh, He's in the beginning, He's in the middle, He's in the end. Uh, he's on every page, uh, He's in every aspect of it. Uh, it's all written by Him, for Him, about Him, uh, that you and I might get to know Him. Uh, thank God for the Word of God. Uh, listen, I don't, I don't get up every day and doubt that my name's Doug Foster. If I get Alzheimer's, I might. But I don't doubt that. It's always been so. Since I got born again, I don't doubt which Bible's the Bible. Because it's the one that God used to save me, and it's the one God's used in my life. Uh, listen, I won't take a substitute for uh, 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 the Constitution of the United States of America. I won't take a substitute for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, including the, the words under God. Uh, uh, and listen, I sure is not uh, going to take a substitute uh, for the most perfect and absolute final book uh, that changed my life, the Word of God. And thank God for that. But there are many who are spiritually unaware of the Scriptures. There are many who are spiritually unaware of the spiritual warfare going on around us. There are people who read about that madman of Gadar and they think people only was demon-possessed back in Bible days. Do you realize there's whole TV shows dealing with finding ghosts and dealing with all this uh, uh, supernatural phenomenon? What they're talking about is demonic activity. There's all kinds of that. And if you need further proof, just go to the mall on Friday night. You'll see a bunch of demons running around, huh? Hey, whatever happened to the Florence Mall? Man, when we were young, there were people drive from all over the state to come to the Florence Mall. It was the epitome of malls all around. And now you can't even find a popcorn making machine in that place. I mean, there ain't nothing in there. It's a mess. And what are them stores that are in there? I mean, uh, you, uh, 
Colonel Sanders, you buy breeches now to hang down below your, your, your rear end because, I mean, they don't pull up. And let me just say this, speaking of breeches, 70% of Americans are overweight. Not all of us are like Clint Ruby. How come everything is skinny stuff? Slim fit, skinny jeans, skinny that, skinny... Hey, who wants that stuff? Him. You can't even go buy clothes that fit anymore. And, and, and by the way, when they're all made in Cambodia and Vietnam, them people are little. We ain't little. She is, but we ain't. We big. Huh? Get me Ahab the tent maker. Let's get some good size clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but people are spiritually unaware to spiritual warfare. The devil's hard at work. Right. People don't have a clue. Listen, I don't mean to be unkind. I don't mean to be ugly, but I just am. I've never seen a time where there's people that have so many nervous and mental issues. Now, I'm not throwing off on you if you have issues. I'm just saying you're the norm. There used to be a time when people realized they had issues or problems, they depend on the Lord. And can I say there used to be a time when people walked with the Lord in such a state they didn't have these mental things going on. But now we're constantly barraged by the wickedness of the devil. You can't go anywhere and escape it. Mm -mm. I joked the other day when I grew up you had three and a half television channels and they all went off after Johnny Carson with the national anthem. Now you got 6,000 channels and can't find anything on it. But Go back and watch some of those things on MeTV. Go back and watch some of them black and white shows. Go back and watch Andy Griffith. And watch and see how much of those shows they have a conscience of God in them. And then watch the modern TV shows. With all the filth and all the vileness and all the wickedness... Uh, and, and look at all the shows that have come out with zombies and vampires and werewolves, all this demonic stuff, and you'll understand how much of an attack we're under. Kids can't go to school anymore without being told all kinds of wicked, vile things. The pressure on these kids is unbelievable. I mean, you know, I, I know I'm old, but I'm not that old. Brother Jim, I don't know where you grew up. You grew up in California, so you didn't have this luxury. I grew up, we all had our shotguns in our vehicles. All of us. We had them in our vehicles, Brother Charlie. And when a bully opened his mouth, we'd, we'd shut it for him. And the teachers would let us, but never once did I ever think, well, I'm going to go out and get my shotgun and take care of business in the schoolhouse. We never thought that. Huh? Amen. Every one of us had a pocket knife. We never pulled a pocket knife. No, we didn't do that stuff. Why do you have all these shootings in these schools and all these things? Well, they've been manipulated. A lot of it's come through all these video games. All the violence. They won't even show Bugs Bunny anymore, so that's too violent. But have you seen some of these video games? Right. Hey, there's nothing wrong with watching Wiley e. Coyote have something that he concocted fall back on him. You know, nothing wrong with that. And, and, and you don't ever see him actually hit the ground. You just see a puff of smoke. You know what's going on. But he shows back up. Huh? And there's nothing wrong with Yosemite Sam. Huh? I'm telling you what, they said, that's too violent. So then we got the Teletubbies. No wonder people's crazy. Uh, did you ever watch that junk? And how about the Wiggles? We're buying everything the Wiggles ever had, and we're going to give it to Ella Rose to take home. So Daddy's got to watch it with her. Some of you don't even know what the Wiggles are. Stupid's what it is. Uh 
And these poor kids don't have a chance. They're, they start programming them from a young age. And the devil has twisted people. And we've got parents who no longer parent. And we've got all kinds of problems in this world. And it's caused people to have some mental issues. It's all an attack and design of the devil. You know what the Bible says? Perfect peace have they whose mind is stayed upon the Lord. You know what to solve a lot of our issues? Keep our nose in the Bible. Uh, trust the Lord. Lean not unto our own understanding. But a lot of folks have issues. Again, if you have issues, I'm not throwing off on you. I'm just telling you where, where we are today because there has been an all-out assault uh, on the minds of human people uh, so they'll no longer put their trust in God. Uh, I don't have time to read the verses. Read Ephesians 6, verses 11, 12. Read 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. You'll find we are in a place of spiritual warfare. And people are so spiritually unaware of it, they wish not that it's even going on. It's not normal for kids to do some of the things they do today. Now listen. I'm not trying to paint a, a picture that we didn't have any problems back in our day. And we had acid rock. But acid rock was calm compared to some of the stuff they're pumping in kids today. Uh, I, was, I was just less than a generation removed from the hippie era. We had problems. Uh, how many of you fellows had a, had a coat or a vest with fringe on it? Let's be honest, anybody? Me and Brother Bob, Brother Jim. Uh, how many guys had puffy sleeves? Me and Jim. How many guys wore bell bottoms? Clint still does, because he never throws down the way. We had issues. But there wasn't an assault on the mind like there is today. See, the devil... He battles people in their mind because your mind never rests. Mm -mm. Listen, there are people who are spiritually unaware. There's people who are spiritually unaware of the standard that they are portraying. Do you realize that Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, but I keep them under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I preach to others, I myself shall be a castaway. Paul realized that his life was a testimony for Jesus Christ. And he was constantly aware of that. And if he in any moment blew his testimony, he'd be a castaway. And those that he preached to would no longer have faith in Christ. Hmm? No wonder Paul said, I die daily. Paul also told the church at Corinth that they were in his heart. He, he said, written epistles known and read of all men. Do you realize there's somebody watching your life? Most people don't. They're spiritually unaware. See, people have bought into the philosophy of, de of, of the devil. You know what his, his philosophy is? My right to my claim to myself. It's all about me. Isn't that what we just experienced the last three years in America? Black Lives Matter, uh, all the social injustice, police don't matter, uh, authority doesn't matter, I'll do whatever I want, and I'll get away. You know they're still looting in certain parts of the country? They'll just break into stores, take whatever they want. I saw a video the other day of a guy walking out, and I mean, he must have 40 or 50 of these very high-dollar purses, you know, like Marcy carries. I mean, I mean, you know, them purses cost $1,000, you know. I'm talking about he had 40 or 50 walk out, and they didn't even try to stop him. Because they're taught, well, no, he has a right to do that. We can't tell anybody no anymore. Might warp them. But can I say, most people are not aware of the fact there are people wondering if what you have is real. You need to be aware of the fact somebody's watching your life. The Lord told us to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. There are people watching your life. Your life does count for Christ. Hmm? Let me go over here and pick on these boys. I know these boys play a little ball. There's nothing wrong playing a little ball. But I know some boys can have a little temper playing ball. Trust me. 
I've been there. I've worn that T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Huh? But what we don't realize is when we go off with our temper, there's people watching us. Hmm? People watching us. Sorry, I hit a little close to home over there, boys, but that's all right. You sat on the front row. You deserve it. Uh, hey, people are unaware of the standard they're portraying. What Jesus left us here was to live our life as he lived his life. We're to be Christian, Christ-like. We're to be the standard for the world. They should see us and see Christ. What standard are you portraying tonight? Hmm? Listen. i close with this one. Miss Pam's about to faint, so I better close this thing down. She's been with me over 25 years. She can handle it, all right? She, she's heard it all. Uh, listen. People are spiritually unaware that there's a seat of judgment coming. Romans 14, 12 says this, So then every one of us, that's all of us, everyone, nobody's exempt, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And Miss Lisa, I'm not going to give an account of you. I'm going to give an account of myself to God. Every one of us are. And people, for whatever reason, you've heard that Jesus is coming. You just don't think he's coming today. But he could. And then we're going to the judgment seat of Christ. You understand that every one of us will give an account to God for our faithfulness. How faithful are we to God? Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, so then stewards, as a count of stewards, to be found faithful. We are a steward of God's word. We're a steward of our salvation that God's allowed us to enjoy. We're a steward of carrying his name. And he expects us to be faithful. How faithful are we? How faithful are we to the things of God? Now, I can't find a better illustration, so I use it often, and you've all heard it. But if I come home next week and tell Miss Nett I've been pretty faithful, that ain't going to fly. See, pretty faithful doesn't fly. But how come we think it flies with God? Right. Well, I've been pretty faithful. That ain't good enough. You're either faithful or you're not faithful. We're going to give an account of God over our forgiveness. Not only that we've been forgiven by Him but that we have forgiveness for others. Because he told us that we're for, to forgive seven times 70. That we're to forgive others because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven us. And yet there are people who sit in the house of God holding grudges against somebody. Well, preacher, you don't know what they've done. I know what I did to Christ. Because I put him on Calvary. And he forgave me. We're going to give an account of our forgiveness, of our faithfulness. We're going to give an account of our focus. Where's our focus been? Has our focus been getting all our shopping done, or has our focus been on Jesus could come before Christmas? I need to live for Christ, and I need to pray and be a witness and let people know about Jesus. We're going to give an account of our focus. Hmm? It amazes me how focused people are on everything but Jesus. You know, in America, every month, 1,500 preachers quit the ministry. Every month in America, 6,500 churches close. That's all different faiths. But 1,500 preachers quit every month. Brother Clint, I know why Moses smoked the rock. He had to deal with people. He got in trouble. And if you saw some of the text messages I get or hear some of the excuses I get why people can't serve the Lord, no wonder a lot of preachers are quitting. 
they labor and study and try to be everything they're supposed to be and and then people take it so lightly when he's sacrificed and tries to be sold out I got a text message today and I told Ned I said I'm going in evangelism you think I'm kidding I asked her I told her that I said, I'm going evangelism you don't get text messages when you're in evangelism you don't eat too, too good too but you, at least you know you're not getting text messages huh I need to lose a little anyway so do you big boy hmm <clears throat> where's our focus we're going to give an account for our fondness those things we love you can always tell what people love because they don't have no problem talking about it I'm already talking about Ella Rose and she's not even here yet Say, so you're going to love her? I already do love her. So, well, you don't even know her. Oh, I do. Huh? Can't wait till she gets here. Grab her little chubby cheeks. Huh? Yeah. That's the way it's going to be. But if I love her more than Jesus, I got a real problem. Some people, all they talk about sports. I understand sports is a big deal. I was very involved in sports for a long time. But if you love sports more than you love Jesus, you got a problem. Some people love their job. God help them. But some people love their job. That's all they talk about. There's only a couple of you, but there's a couple. Let me give you a couple verses about our love. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. It amazes me, I don't hear that come out of a lot of people who come to church. I can hear about this ball player, or this professional this, or this, that, and this event, and this, and that. But I don't hear about... Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Boy, Jesus showed me this today in his word. Boy, I was, I was going through it, and Jesus just kind of snuggled up close to me. I don't hear a whole lot of that. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. And then this verse right here, this one gets me in trouble. I'm going to read it. It's still the Bible. Matthew 10, 37, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Preacher, we can't come to church on Christmas morning. That's when we open our presents. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Why don't you get up at 6 in the morning? Kids are already awake anyway. Open them then. Why don't you open them the night before? Why don't you open them in the afternoon? No, you just love them more than you love Jesus. And he said you're not worthy of him. Hmm? But preacher, you just don't understand. I don't have to understand. I just read you the verse. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not throwing stones at The Bible says... He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. See, you're going to give an account of your fondness. Now, you can make excuses and hide it from me, but you're not hiding anything from him. Hmm. My darling wife has an innate ability. She's always known when something's going on with one of our children. See, she carried them for nine months. She lost a whole lot of sleep over them, raising them. It didn't get better when they went off to college, but she's always known when something was going on with them. They might not have been aware that she knew, but she knew. You may not be aware of what Jesus knows, but friend, he knows. 
he knows. See, too many of us fall in that category, we wist not. It cost Samson. I hope it don't cost us. We all ought to become more spiritually minded, more spiritually aware of our surroundings. Because Jesus is coming. And there's somebody around us that we can impact for his glory. And God help us to be above all things Christian, Christ-like, because he's coming. How aware are you of where you stand with him? How aware of you of what's going on around you? God help us to become truly spiritually aware. Let's all stand, Brother Clint. Come get your guitar and pick out something. God spoke to your heart. Thanks of living my life in sin. I've missed out. There's nobody like him. It changed your life. You come, we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If God spoke to your heart, why don't you come do business with the Lord? Folks are coming. He's getting a song ready. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, I know you wrote the Bible because if man wrote it, Samson wouldn't be in it. Or if he was, it glorifies sin. But Father, I'm thankful for the truth of the word of God. Lord, if we're honest before you tonight, we're not as spiritual as we think we are. It's not a halo in the building. None of us have arrived. We all have room to move up and draw closer to God. So help us to draw nigh to God, and then God draw nigh to us, and help us in our weakness, and help us in our shortcomings. Help us to see the er error of our ways, and help us to shine as lights in this destitute and dark, deserted world. Now, Father, I pray for your children. Lord, you'd bless them. Help them become more spiritual than they've ever been. Discern the mind of God and the voice of God. Help us, Lord, to be more like Thee, to strive for holiness. And help us, Lord, to impact somebody's life. Lord, we know Your imminent return's at hand. Help us to be ready for Your coming. Bless now this invitation. These that are already here, I pray You'd bless them and help them. Those praying in the pews, You'd help them. And God, certainly, if there's anybody amongst us unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Have your will and way, Father. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.